I, I doubt it somehow. I do know that last year, when this was first mooted, I wondered to myself whether or not the society would still be meeting at the Manor House in another <coughs> few years' time. But, but then none of us knew we were going to have a rug pulled out from under our feet quite as quickly as we had done. Nonetheless, Bexley Council tell me that our future at the observatory is secure. <coughs> And so long as that's the case, I'm sure we can always be the Crater Manor House Astronomical Society, regardless of where we actually have our lectures. Um, I feel a little bit like a certain Prime Minister returning from Munich, waving a bit of paper for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's just my natural born pessimism, and in fact, it's always going to be well for the next 50 years. Um, in talking about the last 50 years and the present society, in order to make sure that you're not all here for breakfast, I'm going to be very selective, and I'm afraid that's probably going to upset some people who will come along and say, why didn't you mention him, her, or someone else? Um, I just plead worried about time. However, I don't think there was any doubt in my mind as to where we should start. And that is, with the man that was in at the start, he's still very much alive and kicking. And apart from a few years when he went off to the middle and some kind of formation was performed, uh, the career of the Mr. Johnson Europe. Something that was ahead of its time is now just a museum piece, really. 
And even though I'm sure it will be got working again, I don't think it will ever be of much use in the sense that technology has moved on and uh, photomultiplier tubes are now regarded from a health and safety point of view as some desirable <laughs> CCD cameras can do the job much more easily. Now there are quite a few people who were asked here tonight who couldn't come for one reason or another, mostly age, infirmity or distance. <coughs> and perhaps the most important to mention is the great John Wall. He was most anxious that he shouldn't miss this, but realised he couldn't make it. He sent a message that you'll all find on your table. He wanted us to know that he wanted to be part of the proceedings. And so I do urge you to read it if you haven't. He really is the man that put crater on the map of astronomy and the word crater into the astronomical dictionary. Because quite apart from the 24 inch, which I'm sure history will reveal is one of his smaller telescopes we've <laughs> got, he of course produced the crater eyepiece mount, or crater focuser as the Americans seem to call it. And unlike the APT, that really is still going strong. If you pick up any copy of Sky and Telescope or Astronomy Now, look at the glossy pages in the back, look for the telescope at first, but you'll find the word crater mentioned time and time again. And I think even if the society is not going another 50 years time, people will still be buying cravers, even though a whole generation will have grown up and <coughs> don't know where the term arose. Then, in the much more recent past, there are others who have made it today who are really did more than just their little bit for the society. I want to mention Roger. Um, he really, with his variable star work, uh, done a great deal for the society. When I joined, I thought of him and Dick as a bit of a double, double act, really. <laughs> 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 they talked for a while, and then stopped. They both put the, uh, the program together, and then stopped, and they would mix and match, and, and really between them, running the show, and raising our reputation really very high. Um, Roger, of course, partly because of his international and national reputation for variable stars, managed to do a lot here in the, the society. He even managed to run an, a, a conference, an international pro-am conference on variable stars at the Manor House. That's amazing. Uh, never mind the fact that it was a big success from a scientific point of view. I think the fact that it happened at all is extraordinary. If we tried to do that in the last few years, I would have been told, I'm sure, that uh, the coffee was too hot to go out of the canteen, and no, no uh, caretaker would be available on a Saturday afternoon, and who knows what else. But those were days when uh, we had a management that was very impressive and very keen to help and did their bit for the society. Um, and I'm delighted to say we've got one such person here today, Jenny Grosnes. Thank you for coming, Jenny. Thank you. Uh, you were part of the the uh, admin team with a can-do attitude, but I think it's helped a great deal over the years. And we're delighted to have you here. <laughs> there are a lot of other people who <clears throat> raised the reputation of the society and kept going in the past. One more I would mention who isn't here today is Mark Armstrong. In the time when he was uh, focused almost entirely on the whole of his life on the subject of hunting for supernovae, he used to discover them by the dozen. And he would always report them and mention the word crater in the uh, discovery reports. Um, which is a fact that meant we could all bask in the reflected light of his discoveries. He had them quite faint light sometimes. <laughs> Roger. Well, I had an email a few days ago which said, Does the society still have a Mr. Pritchard? He <laughs> 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 taught me astronomy in 2002 at Greenwich and then uh, got me to come along to the Thursday classes. It was a big success. And then uh, the email went on to say, And is the lady called Rita still there? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my rather clunky way of moving from the past onto the present. <laughs> she really is here as a great asset to the current society. You see, when Roger left and went off into the nether regions or Wales or Welsh borders or wherever it was, we had a big problem. Roger had been putting the electric series together 
we need someone else to do it. And Rita, in her quite unassuming way, just took it over and has run with it ever since. Now that Roger dumped it on me very soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Roger. Well, well that, however it came to you, <laughs> it is an enormous task. I mean, you seek out potential lecturers, you cajole them into coming along, you persuade them to fix the dates, you then rearrange the dates and rearrange them again because their teaching and research commitments mean that they can't go to what they have been able to do in the first place. You remind them a few days before the lectures that they're expected. If they come by public transport, and over half our lecturers do, uh, you meet them at the station, bring them along, advise them on timings and the like. At tea time, you make sure they're fed and watered. And then after the lecture, take them back to meet their connecting transport. And not many people know this, but that quite often involves driving them as far as Gatwick Airport. Oh. When we're all in the pub, she's somewhere on the M23. It's unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you write, thank, thank them, attentively say, would you come again, please? <laughs> make appropriate notes. And I really thank you for all that. Work. pages are really quite up to date um, and interesting stuff. Uh, it's read and looked at by people in the society, I'm sure other people in Bexley too, but actually it's our window and uh, window dressing for the whole world. We have more hits from the site from the United States than we do from Britain, and over the course of the time it's been up and running, we have had hits from almost every country in the world. There was one, one not so long ago, someone logged in from Vanuatu. Although no, no. I don't know that's wrongly, oh, sexy in the surrounds, but we don't, we don't do. um, We're very pleased that you do that. But it's, it's set up as a wiki, and for those of you who don't know, wiki implies collaboration. You think about Wikipedia, or perhaps more infamous WikiLeaks. But actually, although it has the potential for being a collaborative project, 99.9% .9 of it is fun. But then, the local flags that we fly, and we impart to the surrounding neighbourhood, really come to the outreach activities. And they've taken off over the years. Um, there are quite a lot of people, and I've just mentioned Rita, Val, Simon, Eddie Barber, Stephen Brooks, Ted, uh, Martin and others who talk to scout groups, guide groups, women's institutes, all sorts of other people, uh, taking along their expertise and some of our visual aids and really wave the flag for astronomy and for Crater in particular. Um, until quite recently, Terry Miles used to shepherd all forward to rather ill-behaved young children <laughs> around the observatory. Um, and in fact, with the labour of love, I don't know how he managed it. Did, now we go to them rather than them come to us, which I think is a more simple, more manageable exercise. Then, of course, there's the work that we do, and all those people that I mentioned and others do, uh, at the shows that we go to, Dartford and Danson each year, to wave the flag for other education in general and astronomy in particular. And I thank everybody for all their commitment to that. And then there's even book fairs um, as a means of creating money. They may not be very glamorous, but Andy Barber's card is patient. Oh, in that almost. And he and Honor and all the other people I mentioned do an awful lot there. But we're not actually about book fairs, we're about astronomy. And just as in the past we've had the Jack uh, Shells and the uh, John Wall of the Society waving the flag and keeping our reputation going. We now have quite a few active astronomers who are working and publishing their results. And this also reflects well on the Society. Now, I could mention everybody. I mean, you all observe the sky and you all look and you all see it. There's different extents, I accept. But there are three people who, in particular, at the moment, are being very active and publishing their work under the banner of the Society and raising its profile. I just wanted to mention them and pay tribute to them. 
The first is Martin, with his uh, photometry of variable stars, uh, low uh, angle asteroids, low phase angle asteroids, and more recently exoplanets, which is really cutting edge stuff. Someone actually stood up at the CAA meeting last Saturday from another society and said, We think we may have got an exoplanet. And so, so, yes, a, public, a paper on such matters is in press at the moment. It has been, uh, you have been reading to it, Gil, but I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Martin also does a lot of solar imaging and achieves amazing results that have been recognised nationally and internationally. And solar imaging brings me on to the second person I want to mention, who is Honor Wheeler. Honor shows us that the art of drawing is dead. And her solar imaging, and particularly her solar drawings, is quite extraordinary. And not only is it a work of art, but validation against images obtained from other sources shows it's a work of science too. And she's really doing very well for society and herself with that. She also knows a great deal about atmospheric optics and related phenomena. And quite uh, how she manages, I don't know, to see what's staring at all in the face, but recognise it as something worth, worth it next. I don't know if she does. And the third one I would just mention in the same sort of life is Simon Dawes, with his rather oblique approach to radio astronomy, which seems to be very both for uh, solar work and also, of course, for meteors. They're all a great credit, and they're all enhancing society, and all worthy successors to the John Walls and the Jackals of the society in the Everton Down. But of course, we're actually about lectures. We're, we're at us. And we would be nothing if it weren't for the lecturers that come to speak to us. We've got some here tonight, I'm delighted to say. Um, in, the, in the sort of 50-year run of things, um, Nick James is quite a newcomer to the society. But his easy-going style, his approachability, and his ability to make quite complicated matters sound uh, understandable has really endeared him to all of us, and we thank him for coming as he does. Not only that, his ability and willingness to come occasionally short notice certainly endears him. <laughs> and then, of course, there are the big two. You, I'm told if you go on safari, you go to see the big five. You come to Crazy, you come to here and see the big two. They are strictly, and in no particular order, <laughs> without the drum roll, <laughs> Alan Chapman and John Mason. Now, John and Jane Mason couldn't be here tonight, as most of you know, if you run the planetarium, and unfortunately, Friday is one of those nights where he, uh, he has to be on duty, as it were. But I'm delighted that Alan and Rachel are here, uh, and they're here as our guests of honour.